All right, I am excited to dive into the watercolor for this blueberry, these blueberries. <laughs> to start, I'm going to lighten up the sketch that we created in a previous video. I'll have that linked down below um, with my kneaded eraser. So we're just gonna lighten it up enough so that it's not showing through the paint too, too much. I don't, when I'm working realistically, I don't mind having kind of a pencil outline a little bit. Um, but we just want to avoid it from being overpowering or distracting or looking um, kind of cartoonish. So I'm just taking my knee eraser and rolling it across the very top. Um, we're using the same reference image as before, so I'll have that link down below. But All right, and so I zoomed in just a little bit so that you can see both my palette, my mixing area, and my painting, <laughs> so the paper itself. Um, I will, for the commencement of our painting, our first pass, I'll be using a size 10 round brush. This is a Princeton Neptune watercolor brush, so it is uh, a nice thirsty brush, and we'll be able to get a lot of good pigment out of this one. Um, I'm going to thart, I'm going to thart. I'm going to start with Indian Throne Blue. This is a new to me blue, but um, I had, it came highly recommended and it looked pretty close to kind of what I'm going for. And so we're going to just try and really match this blue tone on these blueberries, but it has kind of that nice cool tone, a little bit purpley. I do think I want it a little greener. So I'm gonna take just a touchy touch touch of this transparent yellow and slowly add that to it to see if we can get a little closer. That might be about it. So it's a little more, the blue that I'm looking at on my screen is a little more turquoisey, which can is an easy way to say it has a little bit more green in it and it's it's very bright. So I could start more with like a cerulean, but because I wanna test out this color, um, I'm kind of on a mission to find my perfect blue right now. But I, so I wanted to test this out first. So I like where that's going. I think that that'll work. It's just a, it's um, Indian Throne Blue with just a tiny, tiny, tiny touch of transparent yellow, like barely any. But that was enough to really take us places. All right, now I'm going to also take some of our Indian Throne Blue off to the side here with a little bit of, of our quinacridone red, right? I think that's the color I'm using. <laughs> yes, quinacridone red to kind of create a more purple tone. Probably way too much blue. That's a little closer. For the leaves, I think I'm gonna start with permanent sap green. I mean, that's pretty close. Off the bat, it's a little, it's a little warm. So again, just a touch of our blue. There might be just a little bit of blue and everything. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we've kind of got our color formula started. Um, we also have some of this transparent yellow in here, which we'll probably throw in just to kind of help brighten things up. And then we'll mix kind of a gray brown bark color when we get there. All right, let's just start with a quick wash. So we're just gonna I'll kind of lay down the base layer for each one of these blueberries. So I'm gonna start with the largest one that we drew and I'm going to just apply a very loose wash. Hi, sweetheart. Uh, yeah, what is that? Boob dicks. Yes, blueberries, very good. I'm making boob dicks. A paper, boob paper. Blueberries on my paper, yeah. Yeah, we won't get to eat them, but they'll be fun to look at. 
Hmm. No. Oh, sweetheart. Good grief. All right. Now you got to leave. I was informed that the star shape of the blueberry is called a calyx. So I'll be able to refer to that accurately throughout this tutorial. Oh, I got a sad baby. Once you touch the paint though, you're done. All right, so I'm not gonna work on these blueberries that are touching this current blueberry. Um, I'm not adding a ton of detail quite yet. Um, just adding that kind of loose wash and then we'll kind of go in with another layer and apply a little bit more detail and clarity. All right, so I'm going to skip down to this blueberry so that this one has a chance to dry and that way we won't have any um, unfortunate bleeding. All right, so we've got, there's more blue at the tip of this blueberry and then it fades more to the pink color. So the calyx and then and then eventually more pink. I'm gonna kind of just allow those two colors to bleed together on their own. Okay, this side looks like it's pretty much dry. This side needs a little more work. So I'm gonna work on the blue section here. Okay, and I am already showing how there's this shadow in the calyx by keeping that color a little darker. Now continue adding to it with the next layer. This is, sorry if you can hear some toddlers in the background. <laughs> it's just the reality of where I'm at right now. All right, I think I am gonna finish the calyx for each of these, just kind of that first pass. I'm gonna work on a warmer blend. So with the yellow, and our quinacridone red. So the interior of this calyx is a little bit warmer here. And then the edges here are as well. So while this is still kind of drying, I'm gonna add this in. It's actually looking pretty dry. Clean off my brush and wipe it off so it's damp, but it's pretty dry and I'm just going to kind of dry brush along the edge of this to help blend it in. And I think I am going to add, this just seems a little too purpley. I think I'm going to add more transparent yellow to our mix here. That will help to desaturate a little bit because purple and yellow are compliments. Um, it'll warm it up a little bit, but I think we'll get a more accurate color. Maybe. We'll see. I'm just not happy with these two that I mixed to start. All right. So let's go with that. I'm going to fill this in. Yeah, see, I'm a lot happier with that. So I'm just going to take 
a little more water, fill this in. And this one is a little more fun. Oops. We have a lot of color play in here. So I'm going to finish filling this in, make sure everything is wet. And now we're going to start tapping in some of these other colors. So I'm going to take some blue first. We have some blue in here and down here. Grab some more of this purpley tone to create, kind of play up the shadow a little bit, but allow it to stay mostly blue. Clean my brush off. And I'm doing that to help kind of spread it without it being too, without adding more pigment. I just kind of want to push this around. Now I'm a bit of a control freak, so I want to have all of the control on where this goes and how much it kind of dissipates. However, I do love and admire when people can just kind of let it go and tap it in and see what happens. I always like start off and I, my intention is to be that person, but I'm not. So if you can be that person, do it. Um, I think you'll have more fun. I think you might even have better results, but I just, I am who I am. I don't even know. Um, this is, you know, it's one of those things I'm working on, I guess. So still tapping that in there a little bit. I'm probably playing with it too much, especially because I felt a little uncomfortable confessing <laughs> to you guys, but um, that's, that's where I'm at. All right. All right, and now moving on to this last one. This is kind of the most in between. Um, so we had a more obvious gradient with this one. This is just kind of, I don't know, back and forth. So let's start with making sure everything nice. is wet. And try and avoid our little star shape a little bit more. Okay, so let's see, we have some obvious blue here. Maybe that's more just because it's a shadow, but not a bad thing. And then kind of some shadow here, which again, will make more obvious later, but we're just kind of applying those base values and tones down. And then we've got some of this pink, pinky purpley kind of in between. And I am gonna take some more green. We have this leaf here. So I'm going to kind of play with the idea of reflected color, where color is kind of bouncing around. And showing up in unexpected ways. Okay, and it might end up being covered complete loops to it. Um, so I'm not gonna be too, too picky about it. <clears throat> Alrighty, since we're here anyway, we've already got a little bit of green on our brush. Let's do a quick wash for our leaves. paper is drying a little faster than I'm used to. I'm going to spin it so I can 
reach this just a little bit better. And then I'm cleaning off my brush. It's damp, but not very wet. And I'm just gonna kind of pull up the color. Um, I, I do that because I want it to blend well. And so I don't want there to be like a harsh line for where this color ends and where um, like the bark begins kind of thing. And we're also going to add some reflected color on the leaves here by just adding a little bit of that blue here. Allowing that to kind of play around. And then at the top, I'm going to pull in some of this yellow. I'm going to mix it a little bit more with the green. All right. So that is the end of our first pass. I am going to take a quick break, allow everything to dry and uh, my children to calm down and then we will start working on our next pass which is where we'll be adding in shadows and a lot more detail and definition probably moving to a smaller size brush all right i'll see you guys later all right it is a new day um, this is completely dry i don't think that you need to wait till everything is completely dry before you move on um, but that's just how it worked out for me. So um, I'm excited to start diving in and adding a little bit more detail. Now, unfortunately, um, the recording that I originally made uh, picked up a lot of interference from a local radio station. So um, I'm not able to use what I originally had, but I'm going to do my very best to talk you through just kind of what I'm doing as I'm painting. Now, I did switch to a smaller brush and a different type of brush. So I was using a very thirsty watercolor brush before. Now I'm using the Heritage brushes, which are, um, they're a little more user friendly. So they don't hold quite as much water. And I find that when I'm working with details, I prefer having that drier brush. And all I've done is I have collected some of the paint that we already had mixed on our palette. So I have our blue pigment mixed together and I've taken a concentrated amount of it and I'm applying it to the shadows of this first blueberry. So I'm just kind of working on that gradient. We already established it a little bit, so this isn't like reinventing the wheel, but I am deepening things. We're adding a little bit more detail. I'm making sure that those edges are nice and crisp where before that wasn't as much of a concern. And really I'm going to continue to repeat this process throughout this entire painting. So I'm working on a cast shadow from the larger blueberry on the left that is on the blueberry that I'm currently painting on. And I'm just gonna kind of continue to apply some pigment to that. Um, I'm adding a little bit of water to try and soften that shadow here. Um, so just kind of trying to make sure that there's a nice gradient so it looks very natural very realistic. So see more water, adding that on top. Um, having a wide placement of your water and then the pigment being placed kind of all the way onto the left, that will give you a nice smooth gradient. So having that um, larger space of the water applied. Now I am being very careful not to touch the shadows from the star of the blueberry, the calyx that I had just placed down because I don't want that edge to become compromised. So I want that to be nice and crisp so that you can see that there are two overlapping surfaces there. Um, so I'm avoiding that area very carefully while I'm adding the shadow, the cast shadow for the rest of the blueberry. Now, one of the reasons I started with this blueberry is because it's a little easier. It is pretty much all blue where with some of the other blueberries, we're going to be repeating this step but instead of working just with blue for our shadows, we're gonna be adding in some of our red tones, a little bit more of some green in there. Um, so we'll basically be repeating this. However, we will be playing a little bit more with different colors as we progress. You can see like it's, it's kind of nice to warm up with something that is a little easier where I'm really just adding the blue in here. Um, and eventually I'll get to a little bit of green and then a little bit of 
the red towards the top, but it's nice that there's not a lot of guessing, not a lot of switching colors around and trying to make sure that those bleeds look nice. Now this next blueberry on the other hand, this is when we're gonna start playing with the color variation a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more interesting to paint, but it can be a little nerve wracking. So move slowly. You can always add more pigmentation um, as you go. But uh, yeah, we're gonna start playing around with, we're gonna start with the blue and then we're gonna move into more of the purples and the pinks as we kind of move towards the top of this blueberry. Now I will keep most of the deepest shadows in that blue tone um, because that will naturally, cause it's a little bit cooler, it will naturally push it back and it's just naturally a deeper color. So sometimes you cheat a little bit, um, but we are gonna be adding, having a little bit more color play in here and playing around with that. So I'm just literally adding it to the blue that I've already added but very softly. So you see that I've pulled in a little bit more of that more water so that it's really watered down. There's not a lot of overpowering pigment there because again, I can always add a little bit more pigment. It is really hard though with watercolor, especially like good quality watercolors that stain a little bit to pull that up. We're even pulling in some of the green. So if you remember with our first pass, we had a little bit of that green reflected on here. I loved the way that turned out. So. I'm pulling that in and making sure that it's not completely disappearing, even though we're deepening and we're defining the shape of the blueberry a little bit more by adding these shadows. Now I'm going to apply these shadows in a slightly different way. This is kind of like the way I see a lot of artists do it, <laughs> but not necessarily the way that I do it. First, they wet the area that they want the gradient to go into. So you see that I added a lot of water to really the whole left side of that blueberry and then just added a little bit of pigment on the very left hand side. That will allow the bleed to happen very naturally and slowly, it'll be a beautiful gradient. Um, it's not any worse or any better necessarily, I mean, maybe it is better, but you get the same results if you apply the pigment and then blend it out <laughs> like I do, um, but it's just kind of a different way to do it. So I wanted to show you both ways so that you know that it both work um, well. Just kind of go with the flow that fits your mindset better. I think because my history is in my background in colored pencil, I think of blending second but um, that's just one of those things that as you are, you know, like learning and developing in your skills, you'll kind of find a rhythm and a workflow that really fits with just the way that you move and the way that you think. So don't be afraid to follow that um, instead of just doing what other artists do. So especially if you're able to get the same results, there are some things that you do want to follow, like the proper technique, um, but in general, there's a lot of wiggle room with the arts. All right, so now we're back to laying more layers down and really trying to get the, these deepest shadows nice and dark and deep. And I'm going to just kind of keep going back and forth. You can see that original calyx that we darkened, um, it's pretty light. And so I'm going to need to do another pass. Um, if you start really dark, if you're kind of gutsy like that, um, you don't have to do multiple passes. I would rather do another pass than like risk going too dark too quickly. Um, but especially as you get to know your paint. So like, I'm not super familiar with this blue paint. This is the first time I've used it. Um, so I don't know necessarily how it dries down. And so I'm still learning that. And thus I might need even more passes than kind of usual. Um, even being somebody who's kind of <laughs> tender handed. All right, I did obviously speed this section up, um, just really doing the same thing that I was doing. We're applying that nice deep shadow, making sure that it looks like it is recessed. This area looks like it, there's a little bit of a recess. Um, and then that, that, you know, like the little star area kind of pops up and softening that just with my brush. So making sure that it's not getting too harsh too quickly. I do want those nice crisp lines, but I want there to be a really good gradient inside of there so it looks like one solid piece. 
looking carefully and applying some of my other colors. So I'll be applying, you know, some of this pink here, a little bit of green at the top, just to kind of really play up these colors, really mix it up, um, really have fun with it. All right, we jumped ahead just a little bit so you don't get bored. Really what I did is I did another pass on that calyx, just like I said I was going to. Um, and then we're going to kind of apply some light glazes just to continue to deepen some of these shadows. So here is a glaze of the blue to get that cast shadow in really deep. I don't remember what I was gesturing for there, I'm sorry. Um, but I really wanna make sure that these cast shadows are really popping so that way none of our focal blueberry, that largest one kind of on the left, that that pops forward and that the other one, you know, looks like it's kind of being, it's behind it. So we gotta get that cast shadow there so that one is in front of the other, obviously. Um, it helps to show our light source. It helps the blueberries look a little bit more three-dimensional. And so just continuing to build that up in order to get the color payoff the way we want it to be. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm just going through right now and just kind of popping those cast shadows and I'll be adding additional layers for all of our calyx. So see, cast shadow here making sure that that is nice and deep. This one was a little tricky because I kind of instinctively wanted it to be a blue cast shadow, but I didn't wanna lose some of the pink that we had going on. Thankfully, it didn't seem to matter too much. Adding a little bit more detail and definition. If you look at the reference image, you can see where kind of the star folds um, of the calyx uh, the blueberry, <laughs> the textured part um, kind of pop up. You could see that definition of like where it met with the blueberry. And so I wanted to capture that a little bit, not a ton, you know, not make it be a focal point, um, but I wanted you to be able to see it a little bit. So I went through and started adding some of those more refined details. Now we're creating the stem color. So really all I did was I added some of our transparent yellow, the same yellow that we were using before, and I added it to the purple mixture that we made at the very beginning and didn't really end up using. Because purple and yellow are complements, they will naturally make a more desaturated color. And so you'll get a brown or a gray. So I leaned a little more heavily on the yellow and added a little bit of our red tone in, our quinacridone red, I think that's what we used. Um, our quinacridone red in order to get a slightly warmer value, um, but those were the colors that I used. It's really just, I took most of what was on the palette and I mixed it all together <laughs> for our nice brown shade. Um, I did end up going with brown instead of a gray just to kind of warm it up. Um, you can stick with more of a gray if you want, in which case you'd keep the proportions a little bit more even so you wouldn't add quite as much yellow and you wouldn't add any extra red in there. So, and I know it's a little tricky to see, but really all I'm doing is I'm filling in the lines that we created with our drawing tutorial beforehand. And I am just trying to keep the light source consistent. So I'm making sure that the shadow, if I'm adding any extra pigment, it's all on the right hand side, um, just like how all of the cast shadows for our blueberries are on the right hand side. So they're being, um, it's obvious that the light source is coming from the left. All right, here I went a little off script. I decided that I wanted to have kind of some loose, light leaves and blueberries in the background so that it looked like there was this cluster, but the focal, you know, like almost as though if it were a picture, your focus is on the five blueberries right here clustered together, but that there's just this hint of this larger cluster underneath. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking very light amounts of pigment that we already mixed together. So we've got a little bit of blue here. Um, you can see I've already kind of added some leaves up above our largest blueberry. And I'm just, you know, very lightly adding them in, not even as dark as our initial passes were for kind of this painting, but that just gives this illusion of depth and interest. Once that's complete, I'm starting to play up the leaves a little bit more. So we need cast shadows here as well so that it has the same consistency with the depth. 
in order to create the shadows for the green, I just took a, some of the purple that we, again, didn't really end up using and mixed it with the green. Now, green and purple are not exact complements. Um, they're split complements. So it does desaturate and deepen the green, especially if you have more green than the purple, but it's a great way to create that shadow without um, losing some of the saturation. Um, it's not that mixing red and green would be bad, but it's just something that I tend to prefer. Um, so I used that to, for all of my leaves and you'll see that across the board. I didn't do a lot of definition on the leaves because I didn't want to add too much detail. Detail creates visual interest and thus will create a natural focal point where I want my blueberries to be the focal point for this painting. I don't want you to like look at the leaves or to be drawn to the leaves. Um, if you do notice the leaves, I want it to be just kind of a momentary thing and then you move on. So um, even though I'm adding a little bit of like some cast shadows and kind of defining the leaves a little bit more, I really didn't add a lot of interest to them because again, I didn't want that to be a focal point. So here I'm just taking our green and I'm just deepening everything. So I'm going to, just like we were doing with the blueberries, I'm going to add a little bit more of that blue in there for that reflected light, just to make sure that it's in there. But mostly what I'm doing is deepening areas that are gonna be in shadow and further deepening the pigmentation overall. All right, I'm cheating a little bit here. This is taken with my phone. <laughs> but my memory card ran out of space and I still wanted you to be able to see some of the beautiful color and just how it ended up. I really just added another layer to the leaves. I didn't um, end up really going very hard on these guys because I really wanted the blueberries to be the star of our show. So one last look. Sorry, nothing went according to plan. I've just learned with migraines, you gotta get what you can get. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If there's anything specific that you'd like to learn about next, let me know in the comment section down below. And I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy painting.